Hey guys, welcome to the episode in the React Foundation series. In this episode right here, we're gonna get our hands dirty and actually generate a project. And we're gonna start off very basic using npm init. Now a word about npm, uh, if you haven't already, be sure to install npm packages first because um, you're gonna need that in order to generate the project. So if you check out npm, so if you head over to nodejs.org, you can download that. Um, whichever one works for you is fine. Uh, so as you can see, I already have node uh, 6.3 installed. Um, and so you can download the one from the website as well. All right, so uh, with that out of the way, let's actually get started in um, you know building our app. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna have to use NPM to generate our project. So I just created a folder here called Hello React, as you can see on the screen. So what I'm gonna do here is NPM init and then dot. So what this is going to do is give us uh, kind of like a setting a package.json file. And uh, so uh, I want to call it hello react. That's just fine. Version one is fine. Uh, you know, bootstrap app for react um, and entry point index.js is fine. Test command, I'm just going to leave that empty for now. Get repository empty, keyword empty author uh, license. We can do MIT. Uh, you guys can choose whatever you want. Uh, this looks good. So I'm going to do yes. And then now we're going to boot up this project in Sublime Text. There we go, very simple. Um, so now what I'm going to do is basically we're gonna start to uh, work with our base project. So basically this is, you know, it's an empty project as you can see. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean, keep our directory clean by adding a git ignore. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new file over here and call it git ignore. Uh, and then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the co content um, from here, uh, so I have this git ignore o open over here. I'm just gonna copy the whole thing. Um, so if you do a Google search for node git ignore, you get this file. So I'm gonna copy and paste them all into here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just do a git init. So, you know, I like to work with git. So I'm gonna clear my screen here. So git init and git status, um, git add, commit, uh, initial, Commit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is set up Webpack. Now, what is Webpack? Well, let's take a look. Webpack is a module bundler, as it says over here on the title. Uh, it compiles everything and makes everything efficient in terms of you know when it loads in production for you. Uh, but it not just does that, like if you're using, you know, like you have dependencies, like you you have your your component, your React component. Later, we're going to get into the concept of what components are. But if you have a file that depends on other files, Webpack ensures that all the dependencies are taken care of. So as you can see here, they've got a really nice diagram. Uh, so, you know, for example, if you, act, if you write some code and your code depends on other code, it makes sure that everything is there when you need it. Um, so... Yeah, uh, you know, Webpack has its own idea of how it works. Uh, so, you know, you know, following the instructions going to help us understand better, um, you know, like how to use Webpack. Uh, so to use Webpack, the first thing we're going to need to do is install Webpack. So npm install uh, Webpack. Uh, we can install Webpack as a global. Uh, but what I also do is uh, install Webpack as a development dependency. Now let's talk about development dependency. Uh, development dependencies are basically, uh, the, so if you do npm install slash uh, hyphen g like that, uh, what it does is it installs Webpack as a system uh, dependency. So now I can type something like Webpack and it'll work uh, as you can see here. Uh, but you know, just to ensure that we have the command you know, in our project, it's installed in our project when we need it, um, we can do npm install Webpack save dev. So what this is going to do is it's going to install Webpack into our project. So as you can see here, um, once this is done, it's going to create a node modules folder in our directory here. And uh, it's going to add, as you can see right there, it just popped right in. Um, so once it does that, it's going to also add it to our package.json. So if you're familiar with Rails, this is kind of like your gem file, you know, where you put all your dependencies, like all the libraries you're using. Uh, for development or in, for production or whatever. Um, so as you can see here, Webpack is now um, a, a dev dependency and we're gonna use Webpack in development you know, to reload our code and stuff like that. So that's why it needs to be in the dev dependencies. Now, another tool we're gonna use um, is the Webpack 
dev server. Um, so I can show you guys here if, if we click on the installation. Um, there's a very simple tutorial we can follow here. Um, and the, the dev server is going to make it very easy for us to do like code reloading. So Webpack will serve our app, you know, our front end app and do all the bundling and all that stuff for us without ha us having to really do anything. So uh, we're going to install the Webpack dev server. So I'm going to do npm install Webpack dev server, save dev. And then the next thing we're going to do is we need to configure Webpack to our liking. So this is the beauty behind not having a convention. I mean, having convention means that you get booted up very quickly, but not having convention means you need to configure all kinds of stuff yourself. And I've done this. So, you know, I have my own, um, you know, opinions about what works, what doesn't work, the way I like to do it, which, you know, less or SAS, which one do I use? So I have those opinions and, and those all relate to Webpack. Um, so if you understand that, I'm going to show you guys Webpack. Once you understand that, you can customize it to however you like. That's the beautiful thing about the Node uh, community is like do whatever you want, uh, you know, but you need to know what you do, right? Uh, so, so that's what I'm going to be showing you guys. So uh, we've got Webpack dev server installed, as you can see over here. All right, so th this here is a very nice tutorial uh, in terms of setting up Webpack. So we're going to follow this uh, very, very closely. So first thing we're going to do is going to add the index.html over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the index.html. And I'm going to copy this code over here and paste it. So as you can see here, uh, we're going to start off with following the tutorial and then we're going to customize it uh, as we go. So because, you know, once we get a better understanding, we can like, oh, well, that's how this works. This is how I want to do it. Um, okay, so then here it says to add an entry.js. So let's go ahead and do that. So entry.js. Um, and so what we're going to do next is we're just going to copy this document.write in here and we're going to put it in our entry.js. Um, so what we can do now is uh, we can run Webpack and see, as you can see here in the command line, and say bundle.js. So if I do that, uh, we're going to do Webpack uh, entry. Dot js bundle dot js. So um, this will basically compile, uh, as you can see here, it'll compile the JavaScript for us. You know, Webpack does a lot of stuff, so you know, like, don't worry about the code that's you know being output here. But the point is, as you can see, the main code here, index.html, is referencing bundle dot js. Um, great. So if I actually open this up, uh, we should be able to see something. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal this in the finder. And I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, with, let's say, Firefox. All right, so you see it works. It shows up right over there. Great. Uh, very, very simple example. Uh, and as we go along, it's going to get a little bit more and more intricate. Uh, so then the next thing is, um, you know, we can start doing... So I'm going to skip all this stuff for now. Um, because, you know, like now we've got... We, we understand how Webpack works. Webpack, com you know, builds and compiles all our uh, stuff into one bundle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip all this and I'm going to go into the, uh, the concept of loaders. So um, Webpack uses this thing called loaders to process CSS and SAS and less and all that stuff. And so um, the basic, the most basic, um, you know, loaders are the CSS loader and the style loader. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to install um, you know, these things here uh, to get it to work in our Webpack project. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to install the CSS loader. So npm install uh, CSS loader, uh, uh, style loader, save dev again. So we're going to save it as a development dependency because when we're developing this, we need all these dependencies. Um, and the reason we don't need it in production is because once Webpack uses all this stuff to build everything, it, it builds it into raw CSS and raw JavaScript. So we don't need all these builders and loaders and all that stuff anymore. All right. So uh, now we've got the loaders. And so what we can do next is uh, I'm going to move on to creating. I'm going to skip all this stuff because we, we kind of understand how it all works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to here and create a config file. And so this is a very simple config file we're going to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and go and create the config file over here. So webpack.config.js. And then I'm going to do module.exports equals. And it's just a JavaScript uh, object over here. 
So I'm going to close that out like that. Uh, and don't worry about the red dot. I'm going to explain to you guys what that is later on. Um, so here we're going to have the entry. So this is where that whole, you know, dot entry file comes in. Uh, so here we have dot entry dot JS. And then the next option is output. So the output is, you know, like basically it was in the directory name and then it's bundle.js. Simple enough, right? So like the same thing we did in the command line, uh, we're just putting it in a config file now. So I'm gonna do output and then I'm gonna do open up like that. And then we're gonna do path and then dir name and then uh, file name. Uh, and then we're gonna do bundle.js. Cool. So that uh, will work. Uh, we're gonna keep it very simple. Um, and as we go along, I'm gonna tell you guys, okay, I'm doing, I'm changing the configuration to this because you know I wanna do this. And you guys will understand how it all works. Um, so here we have the module. So um, I'm gonna do module. So this is where the loaders come in. Uh, and we need the object as well. Perfect. And here we have loaders. And then here, I'm just gonna use an array because we can have multiple loaders. Uh, and in this case, I'm just gonna copy this one here and paste it in here. So here, it's going to basically um, you know, allow us to import .css. So we're gonna have a style.css. So over here, we, can, we have some style. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and create some stuff. So I'm gonna copy this style.css into our file over here. So style.css, paste it. And then now we have background yellow on our body. Um, so how do we include this in our, um, in our project? Well, um, the next thing we're going to need to do is, um, so in, in JavaScript, uh, you know, there's like multiple syntaxes now. There's ES2015, there's ES6, and now there's ES7 as well. And, um, you know, we need to install uh, a tool called Babel to make sure that our code uh, can transpile, like JavaScript has now this concept of transpiling. So we can write in future syntax that's not officially supported in the browser just yet, but then the transpiler is gonna compile it down into like JavaScript that can run everywhere. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little about transpilers in the next episode. Uh, with this episode, you know, we're already starting to write our config file. Uh, so it's gonna, all gonna come together in the next episode. If you guys found this video useful, don't forget to like and don't forget to share. Um, you know, we appreciate your support. Also become a member on our website. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one.